Hey, Address Teen Stress, I'm Ava Shrestha, and welcome back to our Teen Stories Told series, where we interview teens or individuals that just crossed their teen years to share their mental health story and give us their thoughts and opinions on teen mental health. Today, I'm here with Bell Engineering intern, Eric Dennis. Eric, can you please start off by telling us a little bit about yourself? So, hi, I'm Eric Dennis. Uh, I'm a senior at Central High School. Um, I'm going to be pursuing aerospace engineering. I don't know where I'm going yet, but uh, aerospace engineering, I really love math, science. I'm involved a lot in my school, and yeah. All right, so with your commitments as an engineering student, intern at Bell, as well as an asset to the Genius team at school, how do you maintain a healthy work-life balance? Okay, so for work-life balance right now, well, just because I'm a senior, it's mostly like life. Like life is like a really big part. Um, and the funny thing is I want to work more. Um, I don't know. I just have like a really strange addiction to money right now. So, so, so that's why, but like, don't get influenced by me. Like make sure, you know, your life is also really important. Friends, family, make sure you keep yourself in check, but how I maintain that work-life balance, you know, I have friends that I hang out with, um, from like time to time. I really enjoy that. And whenever I do hang out with them, I really cherish it. And whenever I do work, I just work in something that I enjoy doing. So just like the Bell Engineering intern, that's engineering. I love engineering. So it just makes it really fun. So instead of it being working, it's just I enjoy it. Um, yeah. And even for Genius Team, too, that's really fun. And then on top of like the work related things you have, you also are involved in a bunch of different activities. You have a bunch of positions in them too at school. So you're president of NHS, co-president of Moy Alpha Theta, co-captain of the varsity tennis team. So from all these experiences, do you believe that extracurriculars can create an impact on your mental health? And do you think your involvements have helped you grow like personally, personally and academically? Why or why not? Oh, for sure, for sure. So I think um, especially like like the leadership like leadership positions it's allowed me to like open up more talk more um like I remember when I was a freshman and I like was not talking and like now as a senior I can't stop talking so um it's just like helped me like open my personality more and just because of those leadership um leadership opportunities mm, but like academics wise and stuff like that, it does take a toll depending on how much like you wanna prioritize stuff like that. So what I would say is just make sure that you're like prioritizing it like based on like what you wanna do um, and like have a schedule. Yeah. All right. So aside from activities, you're also an academic weapon. So you're third in our class right now. So do you feel an academic sense of pressure from those around you, whether that be family or friends or teachers? And has this helped or hurt your mental health? Um, You know, there was like a time where I cared, but I don't really right now. I think like for me, it's like, as long as I'm having fun with what I'm doing, like as long as I'm having fun, like, Bro, I don't care. Like my life is, I'm like I'm living life right now. Like I'm 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 doing great. Um, I don't know. Just like I think it's for me. It like the rank thing is just like a number. Um, like it's cool that you're gonna I'm gonna be on stage, but that's just this is one moment in my life. And yeah, that it's it's not really. Yeah, I don't think it's there's no like pressure from it. Like my parents don't even care. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's just one of those things where it's, I, I enjoy what I'm doing right now. I'm gonna, I'm looking forward to the future, you know, get my money up, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Like, it's just a number. It's, so, would yeah. you say that your perspective on academics since you're a senior now has changed since freshman year? How would oh, you sure. your perspective change? Okay. Um my perspective on academics. Okay, so 
I remember where I would like take like how I said, like I cared about the rank thing before. I would be like, oh yeah, let me take all these classes. Let, let me just get my GPA, GPA, GPA. <laughs> That's all I cared about. But but then I realized like, okay, like I'm going into engineering. What are these like specific engineering classes that I have to do? Like, like I only care about the stuff that's really going to like help me, right? So like whether it's like physics or aerospace or like calc, like I only take those classes that I want to take and I enjoy taking. And yeah, and just like, you know, put in, like put in a hundred percent of what I do. Yeah. So, I mean, I think it's pretty clear that you're like naturally good, I guess, at academics and activities. Do you think that one's more important than the other or are they equally important just in general? Equal, no, wait. I think, I think activities is more, hmm. Okay, I think activities is more important, definitely. I think activities allow you, because academics, it's really like narrowed into like those specific assignments that you're like encapsulated in. But activities, like you have the freedom to do whatever you want, um, like whatever you're interested in. So like for me, oh, a good experience that I had was I was in FBLA, right? I was in FBLA big part of FBLA, like FBLA, FBLA basically like took over my life back in junior year. And I was like, I was like thinking about it. I was like, yeah, FBLA is pretty cool. It's given me a lot of cool things, but in like the main like point of things, I also really wanted to be an engineer. And I realized like, dang, like FBLA is mostly business and stuff like that. And like, it was nice to have, and I learned a lot from it, but I also wanted to go back to that main goal of business. So that's why I like kind of took, like, I kind of stepped down from my position. And I was like, okay, let me realize, like, let me try to get myself back involved into engineering. So now I'm in the engineering club or like robotics club at KCAL, which is really fun and I'm really enjoying. So I think just prioritizing, like, you know, what you really want to do. So do you think it's important to kind of do your activities and stuff depending on your major or like what you're passionate about? Would you say that it's more fun to do extra or extracurricular activities? When yeah, yeah. Something you're passionate do, about? do what you're passionate about. Do what you're passionate about, 100%. Yeah. All right. So how do you prioritize self-care and maintain your mental well-being, especially with a demanding academic schedule and extracurricular activities? Mm. Um, you know, it's sometimes it's just like, it's just random for me. Like, like self care and mental well being, like I'll be doing an assignment sometimes and I'll be like, okay, I feel like, I feel like taking a shower to like, you know, recalibrate, readjust myself and like get myself like focused. Or like sometimes I'm like, okay, I need to take a break. Let me go outside and take a walk. You know, those are like the best ways that I can like take care of myself, self-care. Um, another way would be, another way would be like me, like cleaning my room. So I just like, I'm like, okay, let me just clean my room real quick. Like before I even start to do anything, I'll just like, it's just like an impulse. So that, that like, you know, like the address chain stress, that, how, that cleaning my room is how it addresses my stress interesting analogy <laughs> what would you say are like your hobbies oh uh, my hobbies um i like driving i like <laughs> i like playing tennis um what else do i like to do you know i like i like sleeping it's very popular among us teens um i like listening to music actually that's another thing forget about forget about cleaning my room I love listening to music okay uh music is one of those things where I can put it on while while I'm stressing like while I'm stressing doing homework I can put it on and de-stress so I love music so yeah music is good what kind of music do you listen to to de-stress oh okay 
I listen to um, I listen to some Travis Scott. I listen to some Drake. You know, I listen to, but I also listen to like some like pop, rock. You know, I'm pretty diverse. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you would think rap is de-stressing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You know, like, cause sometimes, like, sometimes they're like lyrical geniuses, right? So sometimes I'll be, I'll be like, listen to their lyrics, and I'm like, bro, that's a bar. Like he's he's speaking facts. So, yeah. Interesting. So talking about technology, since music you listen to on technology how do you mm -hmm. navigate the impact of technology and social media on your mental health Ooh, that's a bar but um how, how do i navigate so for social media i like also get distracted a lot by like instagram i scroll through instagram reels a lot but um i don't know it's just it's just those things where i'm like okay like you know, like, you have something that you're focused on, make sure that you're focused on. I don't know if that helps, but that's, that's like, I just, I just, I'm just like, okay, I have to get this done. I just need to get it done. I'm going to throw my phone, like, across the room and, like, not get distracted. That's the best way. Do you believe in the social media detox? Like, like ghosting everyone? Kind of, but more of like reading your like TikTok, deleting social media, so you can like clear your mind from negativity. That whole like theory. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah. Like oh yeah, yeah. I agree. I agree. Would you ever do that? Maybe. No. Maybe. 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 It just depends. It just depends. Like the circumstances. Right now, like Spotify Rap, like everybody's like sharing their playlist. I'm like so interested. That but. But like, I don't know, I might do that if I'm like, really like, attached. And I'm like, because like, I'm self aware. Like, that's, a, that's, also, that's always a good thing to be being self aware. I know when I'm like, in the pits, in the trenches. So interesting. So diverting out of the social media topic. So as I said, a little bit before you're the co-captain of the varsity central tennis team so how do you foster teamwork and support your teammates both off, both on and off the court also how do you think that that extra support creates a difference in their overall performance oh okay so i've been part of i've been part of the tennis team like all my four years and my first year my freshman year was when um like that was like when covid happened right and like the tennis team was like the first thing I got introduced to as like a high schooler so like being able and the seniors were so nice they were like so nice like all the upperclassmen were really nice and they really got me involved and they just got me involved in so many things that made me feel so comfortable um whether it be like inviting me to other like extracurriculars like FBLA or um just like going out to eat sometimes so I really take inspiration from them. Um, and Coach Mattis also helps with like the team support. Like for Christmas time, we do team skits. Um, that's really fun. And we also do a lot, we do a lot of team bonding stuff, um, whether it's like on or off the court. Um, and just like being in close, close communication with your teammates. Like we have a group chat with the boys and that's really fun. It's really funny um but yeah so that's and it does it does um really help their play style just because like for for us at least like we're really competitive amongst each other so just like increasing that pressure as coach Mattis says pressure is a privilege so so it does help them play better and yeah so we're both seniors so it's college app season, finding out results, everything like that. So what are some things that you've learned about mental health reflecting through your high school journey? And what coping mechanisms do you hope to take with you to university? Okay. Mm, make sure you start your college apps now. That's or not now. Um, before in the summer. That's the best advice I have. 
Don't do it now like me. I'm writing my Texas A&M one right now. <laughs> As we speak. But, um, um, yeah, just, just, uh, just make sure, like, you know, you're, you're, you're focused. Um, Do you have see. any coping mechanisms that you're like? Oh, coping mechanisms? Mm, I don't know. I say, like, you know, use your, like, use your resources, like, talk to people. Like have your friends by your side whenever you're stressed, um, and you know, like you always have teachers, like friends, family, like always out there to like support you. So, that like that would be the best like coping mechanism, I would say. Hey, your and, uh, mechanism is music. Yeah, mine is mine is music. Yeah. Okay, so I have one last question for you. What advice would you give to someone that's struggling with their mental health or like some kind of message that you'd like to relay to our Adjust Teen Stress audience? Okay. Mm, I would say, I would say, believe in yourself. Believe in yourself. And as long as you put 100% of what you do, then you don't have anything to worry about. If you have, if you have, an assignment, if you have a book project that you're working on, you're stressing about, you put 100% of what you do, then then you're chilling, all right? Whatever grade you get, doesn't matter. You you put as much as you put in, you're, that's, you put as much as you put in, you're, that, uh, you're satisfied. I'm gonna be satisfied. You're gonna be satisfied. We'll all be satisfied. Um, yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Eric, for sharing your story with us today and kind of talking about your thoughts about mental health. And thank you for helping us address teen stress.